The war on drugs, in my opinion, is a joke. All it's done is made criminals a ton of money, and I'm happy for it because I've profited from it. If it wasn't a profitable business, I don't think I would be in the, I wouldn't be in the market. If I become an illegal grower because, because of the government saying so, I don't want to lose my kids. The criminal, the businessman, and the patient. These are the players in Canada's medical marijuana world. A world that's about to get turned upside down. There'll be winners and losers, and I've set out to talk to them all. This is where I spend a lot of my time. First, the patient. When Stephen Stairs began using medical marijuana 12 years ago, there were only a few hundred licensed patients. Now he's one of about 40,000. So what's this? I call this my sanctuary. These plants mean the world to me. They mean the ability for me to see longer. Stairs suffers from severe glaucoma and only has 8% of his vision left. His doctor prescribed marijuana to slow the disease and Stairs insists it's the only thing that's worked. The thing that really gets me is the fact that being vision loss, I won't be able to see my kids graduate or, or learn how to drive stuff like that to see your kids do things that's the hard stuff that's the stuff that's hard to get by I forgot how heavy this one was stairs is afraid that under the new rules he won't have access to marijuana after nine years of growing it legally in his garage he and all the small-time producers like him are being shut down Instead, Stairs will have to buy from a large commercial grower who will produce the marijuana and ship it to him by courier. And so as one way of doing things ends for people like Stephen Stairs, there's a new and unlikely player in the marijuana world, the businessman. We should get PayPal set up. Daniel Petrov is going all in as he hopes to be the big winner in the new system. Petrov is desperate to land one of the lucrative government licenses. It's 89 mil and fits, fits an ounce perfectly. It would be fair to say that Daniel Petrov stumbled into marijuana. A serial entrepreneur, he's owned a restaurant and lounge, a laser hair removal clinic, and flipped houses for a living. In a world where most people you meet are evangelical about marijuana, he doesn't even smoke the stuff. For him, pot is a product. How much money have you guys sunk into this? Pretty much everything. Uh, I've sunk everything in this market. Uh, everything I've had, I've even... Uh, take on a second mortgage just to just to put it into to, to construction. So, so a thousand, hundreds of thousands probably. Hundreds as of thousands, absolutely, as a team for sure, absolutely. Auto, auto. Hello. I was surprised to learn that Petrov's team even includes this man, Otto Fulprecht, a Harvard business grad and former pharmaceutical executive with 25 years of corporate expertise. I'm an entrepreneur, but Otto is the true, uh, the true businessman. You can think of this place as a marijuana startup. It's a great opportunity. I think the medical marijuana opportunity is a great opportunity. You're, you're in the beginning of it being legitimized by the government and being accepted as a medicine. And you're, in the, you're in the beginning of people being able to come out of the closet and, and not feel bad about using a medicine or uh, something where, where it was, you know, they had to kind of not tell anyone or not hide it. Forget the gold rush. This is the green rush. Health Canada's own statistics project an annual market of $1.3 billion by the year 2024. By then they predict medical marijuana users will number almost half a million. I'm 100% I'm that the medical marijuana business at the end of the day can provide more than money than anyone would need to, to, to live comfortably. So I, I don't really focus on, there is no target or number for me. I know this business will provide. Uh, but it's focusing on building the business. But if his business is to work, Petrov needs customers. The question is, will someone like Stephen Stairs buy from a government licensed pot grower? I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And we're looking at $40,000 a year. Like for you? For, just for me. 
Where does the government assume that, that sick people around the country have liquidity just lying around where they can spend this money? Spend this, this money and, and, and just, just have no repercussions for how it affects their daily lives. Stephen Stairs is right that prices are going to go up. Even Health Canada predicts that's what's going to happen. Raise the price of anything and people get mad. Medical marijuana users are no different. It's corporate greed. You got these big major corporations and companies that want to walk all over this because it's a billion dollar operation. But what about the patients, the, the sick and the dying? That's Paul Hunt. In 1997, after suffering a serious head injury, he was confined to a wheelchair and could barely speak. I knew that sooner or later no, things were Hunt tells me he got better the moment he was prescribed marijuana. And that was just the beginning. Hunt was even able to open this place, the Green Cross Dispensary, where he's dedicated his life to helping others get access to marijuana. If you're a licensed user and you don't want to grow your own, you can come in here and shop for the pot you want. Think of it as a kind of marijuana pharmacy. Which is your uh, favorite? My favorite? Granddaddy Perp. That's the best for oh. me, anyways. There are dispensaries all across the country, and many people believe that they would be the model of the future. Now the government will close them all down. It's the big corporations that are playing with the government now. Uh, the one who's got the, the most toys wins, I guess. You know, and I'm just fighting for the little guy. At 63, and never having protested anything in his life, Paul Hunt is now part of a national coalition of medical marijuana users determined to fight the government changes. April 1st, 2014, the day the new regulations come online. What kind of situation will that put you in? I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get charged for trafficking. And if so, if that's the case it's going to be, then so be it. Like I'm standing my rights here. I'm a Canadian here and I'm just... I know that I'm allowed to grow medicine for my own well-being. So you'd go to jail? And if that, I will go to jail. For Paul Hunt, marijuana is more than a medicine. It's a cause. Are you going to go enjoy the downstairs? Yes. The coffee is flowing, good and good. there's good company down there. Very good. And it'll be better now that you're going to be down there. <laughs> In the basement where medical marijuana users can go to smoke, the new law is all anyone talks about. There's fear and distrust. Government weed won't just be too pricey, they argue, but it won't be any good either. But it's more than that. The people here, they believe the government has no place in the rolling papers of the nation. Russell uses marijuana for chronic pain. Well, I buy off the street. Buy off the street before you buy it from the government. I don't want it to be in the government market. Dennis is an amputee with severe muscle spasms. Everybody, everyone at this table will probably be seeking uh, product elsewhere, and that's where? On the street. It doesn't take long to realize that the huge market Health Canada is banking on might not be a slam dunk. Of course, the elephant at the table here is the main reason the Canadian government wants to change the system in the first place that for years, medical marijuana growers have sold to the black market. In a way, you could say that the medical marijuana users almost ruined it for themselves because the RCMP keeps telling us that the medical producers have been selling it off to the, to the black market. And I think that, that statistically, you've got 26,000 permits in this country to cultivate and anecdotal evidence of a few bad apples. Um, it's kind of like having a few drunk drivers every day kill somebody. It's unfortunate, but we don't pull all the cars off the road. A few bad apples or a fundamentally flawed system? I guess if anyone might know for sure, it's the final player in this story. The one who's always been there, the criminal. We're getting close to the illegal grow up, so we've been asked to take the batteries out of our phones so that we can't be tracked through the GPS. Is, uh, they may ask you guys to uh they want to sweep your camera equipment or whatever, just uh, if they're that paranoid. I can't speak for what we're walking into. The man who runs this illegal grow up agreed to be interviewed as long as we changed his voice. He says, you want proof that the current system is being abused? The market doesn't lie. What's happened is the federal government has allowed people to grow at will and they're supposed to dispose of all their extra weed. Okay? 
I don't know anybody who's disposed of extra weed. All that has happened is it's ended up in the black market. There's so much supply and there's, there's only so much demand and it's made the product price plummet. Yes, I still make great money, but there's not the money that there once was in it. It feels a little odd to get such frank economic analysis from a guy in a ski mask. I wonder what he thinks of the new government policy. What do you make of the government's plan to license big, big growers? Thank God for it because there's profit in it for me. I'm happy that the government's going to get involved and make sure that the stuff's going for more expensive because I can produce it cheaper and better than they can. Are you saying that with the new law you're going to make more money? You're, you're in favor of it because you're going to get rich? Personally, I'm in favor of it because I'm going to make more money. You bet. My paycheck's going to double again. As we drive away, I run the players through my mind. Has nothing changed? Could the big winner in the new marijuana market once again be the criminals? Where does that leave the legitimate businessman? Will there even be a market for him? One thing is for sure, Stephen Stairs seems to have the most to lose. I mean, if I become an illegal grower because, because of the government saying so, I don't want to lose my kids. I don't want to, I don't want to lose my house. I don't want to lose my family. I don't want to go to jail. It means the world to me to have an ability to grow my own medicine and to have assurance that I have some sort of control in my destiny of, of my disability. And I don't think it's fair that the government's taking it, taking that away from me. It's ironic that in a time when pot is more accepted than ever, we could be driving the legitimate medical marijuana users back into the shadows. I either keep growing or I go blind. The government's going to have to come to my door and stop me. They didn't come for 12 years. If they come now, <laughs> that's just a slap in the face to every patient out there. Nick Purden, CBC News, Winnipeg.